this year marks the 150th year anniversary. anniversary of the Chicago Public Library. And if you all aren't familiar with the Chicago Public Library, it was started um, after the Chicago fire and it was uh, had all the books at the point donated to it. Right. And the point of it was that the Europeans thought that the books should be given out and everybody should have access to free books. So Chicago was at the forefront of that whole different topic. But right now, we are here at the George C. Hall branch, and we're gonna talk about why this building is really significant. Yeah. Let's start the show, 77 Flavors of Chicago. Boom. Vivian G. Harsh, Vivian G. Harsh, uh, she is credited as being Chicago's first black librarian. Library manager. <laughs> you know, librarian. Oh. Yeah, like first black librarian, right? She started um, that tenure in, I think, like 1924-ish mm -hmm. is when she started that tenure. And why are we talking about her at the uh, George... Uh, Cleveland Hall Cleveland, branch yeah, of the yeah, Chicago Public Yeah, Library. right. Why are we talking about that? Um, well, her first like major job mm -hmm. when she became the the hall director mm -hmm. here at this branch is where she really kind of like started to become who she was. What she was is she created a bunch of different like events and activities and gatherings for black folks to come and they gathered right here at this um, library mm -hmm. and that's what kind of like started you know like the black movement and a place for African Americans to be mm -hmm. and learn and read and she she made people gather here and and she, with all her different collections and that she did she actually started the collections at the hall mm -hmm. you know here um, way back in the day we're talking mm -hmm. 1931 mm -hmm. two three four right um, but she started all that here and Hall was a huge fan of hers. That's why she became he was, the director. He was also like an activist. Right? He was an activist as well. Um, and a just philanthropist. A philanthropist, yeah. And just loved everything that she did. She kind of took that ball and ran with it, okay? Uh, and when she ran with it, you know, she created her own collection, right? Of a lot of literature and, and archival type things for African Americans. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are going to go next to find out what she did afterwards. Let's get it. Sweet. Nat King Cole. John Jones. This is amazing. Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones. Look at this. Lorraine Hansberry. Are you kidding me? Lorraine Hansberry. Oh, Obviously geez. Vivian Lynch. Yep. Jesse Owens. Okay, so before we actually get started, uh, we are going to go with Stacy Williams mm -hmm. and we're going to wash our hands because we are dealing with like ancient Egypt right now. Ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt. <laughs> and, and and I'm not about to get fined or have mm -hmm. to pay for none of this stuff. So we're going to wash our hands so we can be able to touch this stuff and preserve its, its integrity. Yeah. So let's go. Yeah, we are ready to do this. <laughs> so, just kind of rolling through some of these collections, which we mentioned. Some of them have come out of like Vivian Harsh's collection. Some of them are related to the Hall Branch records. Uh, and some of them are related to, um, some of them are also related to our Black Renaissance collection. So just really great information about how the building um, was designed, for instance. Uh, this is an example here, uh, one of these serials. It's an example of the types of books that Ms. Arch would be collecting. She wanted, she wanted books and materials in the collection that were 
scholarly and also related to art and literature. It, so a really broad collection, essentially documenting black life, uh, which she titled the Special Negro Collection. This is what you see in the background wow. behind her. Wow. So right there's just a lot of, a lot of the books that she did collect on her travels. Mm -hmm. And in relationship with other authors at the time, she had uh, very close relationships with some authors. Here's a photo of her with Richard Wright, um, wow. who, uh, as he was uh, donating his copy of Native Son to, to That's the amazing. branch. Um, also very special, this is Charlamagne Hill Rollins. Uh, she was Chicago Public Library's first black children's librarian. And um, she, yes. she even, so what was very special about Ms. Rollins was that she actually wrote some of her own children's books because she understood that publishers were not necessarily writing enough books about and for black children that portrayed them in positive ways. Mm -hmm. So in the frustration of that, I mean, not that she did not also advocate, but that she just started writing her own books. Wow. Uh, so it just really the intention there to create conditions and space for literacy, scholarly exploration for little kids all the way through adults. This was uh, the women's reading groups. They used to meet at the Hall Branch. This was in 1940. Um, and there's uh, Vivian Harsh right there Look in the Vivian. upper left. Look at Vivian. Look at <laughs> Absolutely. And all these very, very well-appointed women coming in to discuss whatever book was of the moment. Here's a letter here from Zora Neale Hurston, wow. um, in which uh, Vivian Harsh had reached out to her to come by for a program during this Black Renaissance wow. era. Another letter from Langston Hughes. Oh, Langston Hughes, look at this. Also a friend. Langston Hughes, y'all. <laughs> Langston Hughes, just writing letters. <laughs> Just writing letters, also also letters from Langston Hughes to Charlemagne Hill Rollins. What's really cool is, hold on, let me go back here. You know what's wild is this, this article says that it would not be surprising if one day her collection was named the Harsh Collection and held the way it is, like similar to the Schomburg Collection. Same or not wrong. Say that again. That. That so it says, it would not be unlikely that a future date, the more more than 2,000 books she gathered on the American would be placed in special collection at Hall Branch might someday be called the Harsh Collection. Mm. Similar to the Sharpenberg Collection. Right there, y'all. I don't know if you can see that, but it's right there. Uh, it's, tiny. it's tiny. Tiny, but incredible. But tiny, what I was incredible. gonna say is like, check this out. Like, here's, here's some detail for you. It cost $1.95 to send that from, uh, from New York to Chicago, like <laughs> it is, that's amazing. It's another letter here from Gwendolyn Brooks to Charlemagne Hill Rollins. Yes, and we're definitely so definitely uh, peers, wow. children's literature, and poetry. Let me turn, let me turn this camera around real quick. You guys see you guys see our face when I say I can touch a letter from Gwendolyn Brooks right now because I wash my hands for one, <laughs> and B they have it here. Like that's amazing. Let me turn it back around. Look at look at that. <laughs> What did she say? What's she talking about, Charlamagne? Her hmm. gift is long delayed and even now is... Paid in insufficient measure, rhymeful reverence. reverence for such excellence is microscopic treasure. Nothing, underlined, is enough for one who gave us love, who gave us clarity, who gave us sentience, who gave us definition, who gave us of her vision from Gwendolyn Brooks, May 25th, May 25th 1963. <laughs> what? That's, wild. That's This podcast is dope. I just want y'all to know that. My mom was born like two months after that. Oh, wow. I love seeing people that could say that. Yeah, this, like, this, is, this is amazing. <laughs> That's very scholarly point of view. Obviously, that documentation is important, that accounting is important. And there were other collections that she put together that, that were actually helpful in terms of studying genealogy, which she knew would sometimes be complex for black people because of our history in this country. So she, it, it, was, it was also that, yes, she understood this could be a place that could plant seeds for a lot more work, yeah. essentially. This is, 
Batman and Lily just being able to... Look at this diary, y'all. There's a diary. I am opening it very... Very gently. Very gently. And holding it up. But diaries tend to be very fantastic forms of archival documentation because it is a person um, outlining their experience in a, in a way in an intimate enough way that you wouldn't necessarily get from maybe reading, um, you know, maybe reading a printout or, or a type up of a letter that's more official. A diary is, I think, I feel, here's what's happening and here's how it related to me. So being able to have materials like that as well, diaries, letters, photographs. That's um, amazing. Absolutely. What's going on, everybody? Yet again. <laughs> yet again. Like, like, yet again. Wild. <laughs> I just, I swear. I swear, I promise you, Chicago is one of the dopest. I love this podcast. Every yeah. time we do it, I love it more. It's like, we get to see this kind of history here. Right. Y'all need to come check out the Woodson Branch right here in uh, Washington Heights yeah. uh, on the east side of uh, Beverly. So. Right. Make sure y'all get out here. Go to any public library. Just learn, man. Like, Chicago is so dope and chock full of knowledge. I done worked up an appetite. So you know what that means. We know what time it is. It's time to go eat. Let's get it. at the um not back we are at the food portion of mm -hmm. today's episode so we are at peaches in bronzeville um it's been around for about eight years it's owned by chef um cliff from who is way too famous he doing to his be thing here today which is wild okay yeah <laughs> yeah yeah as, as i get my little instagram footage <laughs> Bing bong. um so chef has been has been in the industry for 15 years he's worked in france he's worked uh as a private chef he worked he's, in france he worked at the can film festival <laughs> and he's just walking around here like a normal he's, person he's just walking around like, like <laughs> okay all right like it's nothing all right they hosted something for the uh the james beard uh awards here really? yeah it was like one of one of the more unique events that they have had on the south side so we so, so we just in the presence yeah. The presence of the Lord is here. Okay. You know what time it is. I'm ready for that. Um, um, so today we right had here. to order everything yes. that people recommended off of the menu. Um, I think we came pretty damn close. Mm -hmm. I, well, mm -hmm. Very close. Yeah. And he's, know. and he's sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> he just, my man but is just sweeping. Also, <laughs> everyone, that's, everyone that's here is so nice. Yeah. Um, this is the first thing that we tr were trying. Oh Lord! Is the shrimp and grits, mm. which is what they're famous for. Mm -hmm. um, I want to start with that. Yeah, go ahead. Start with that. It's so they're so cheesy. Let me try it. Mm -hmm. Wow! I didn't even get a shrimp, and that was delicious. First of all, <laughs> if you're not getting cheesy grits, what are you really doing with your Literally, life? If you put sugar in your grits. <laughs> Get out of here. Keep for real. Should be um, your grits. Go to jail. Go to jail. <laughs> go to jail. Simon croquette. Oh no. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do that. But no, like, this is this is a, a dense salmon croquette. Like it's it doesn't fall apart. It's like perfect. Mmm. Mmm. Salmon croquette going crazy. This is amazing. But the shrimp is also going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And you get decent sized shrimp. You don't get little baby shrimp. And I like that they keep the tail on because if you didn't know, that's where the flavor comes from. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Let me ask y'all a question. Do y'all put pepper on y'all grits? I hope so. I mean, they're pretty seasoned too, so. They are, but you know, it's just a thing. It's just a habit. You know, you got to throw the pepper on there. Mm -hmm. Oops. So we got, um, pretty much a lot of things we ordered are sides, but the two main dishes that we got are the hangover plate, mm -hmm. which is uh, chicken thighs. Do you want to hold up that knife holding up the oh, chicken thighs? Oh, yes. This is going to be a shot, y'all. This in it and the bread stuck to it. This <laughs> is going to be... Ooh. So, those are the chicken thighs. Ooh. And then it comes with a with cheese grits that we added shrimp to. And then it comes with scrambled eggs. Look or eggs any style you like. Look scallion on there. Ooh. <laughs> Wild. Mm. Uh, we also got the catfish. 
and greens and grits. The greens are fire, by the way. I just took a little oh, bite. Did you? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I know she ain't getting the greens before I did. <laughs> mm. And the grits, I already know they're going to be great because I just tried them on the shrimps. Amazing. Look, we good right here. <laughs> we good. We good. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, not yet, I don't think. Thank you so much. The grits are fire. Yeah. I already knew that. I'm going to try the catfish without the sauce. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the... Look this at, is the, okay, but show show the fillet, how big the fillet of catfish yeah, is. Yeah, let, let me show you that. Let me show you that. Let me show you the one wow. unbroken one. Oh lord, look at that. Look at that right there. Yeah. Nice and seasoned. You mm -hmm. can see the you can see the the the, the seasoning on it. Ooh. Thank Ooh. you so much. And then look at the little fillet on the inside. Look how white Fire. and juicy and fluffy that is. Fire. Ooh, my goodness, y'all. Let me go ahead and try. It's fire. It's amazing. Honestly, I feel like so it's 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 meant to be a breakfast restaurant, but obviously we're here for lunch. Mm -hmm. Um, they close at two every day, and so there's a lot of breakfast options. But we ordered things that feel like they're lunch options. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, the next thing that I want to try is the biscuit. Look how flaky this yeah. biscuit. Look is. at that biscuit. That biscuit do look good. And it comes with a, the like, what would go. Like the peach. I don't peaches. know if you can see it, but it, ooh, it's peaches and cinnamon. Wow, that's fire. I mean, this place right here, it's 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 good food right here on King Drive. I mean, yeah. right literally and, kitty corner to the uh, Watt, Hair Washington yeah. uh, Cultural Center. And they do, they do a lot of work with their community. Everyone that works here is from the community that lives in the area. Um, they hire, you know, young people that can like grow in the industry. So like if you want to start out, uh, small and then kind of grow your way up um, but they do a lot of like work with the community aside from just cooking yeah obviously yeah. and outside, aside from just providing food mm -hmm. so you're also supporting a wonderful um, local restaurant yeah so let's try this flaky biscuit Yo. it's warm and toasty oh my god this sauce this sauce that came with the catfish Bro, what's going on here? Let me go ahead and get some crispy bacon. Wow. Look at the bacon. This is perfection, y'all. <laughs> this is perfection. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I mean... You want to try the chicken? Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, let's try the chicken. So, like oh, Jarius showed. Let me get one. Let me get, let me get a piece of chicken. We can toast to mm. it. Hold on, don't do all that. It's like a sweet buffalo. Cheers. Ding. Ding. Mm. Mm. It's like a sweet buffalo, right? Mm -hmm. mm. It's crispy. Very sweet, but spicy. A little buffalo. Look. Yeah. Hey, y'all. It's, it's a honey buffalo? Man, I'm about to eat my fingers. Ain't nobody else here. Mm mm mm. Mm mm mm. mm, -mm. Wow. You know, we always say we love when the food is great, but we love it even more when, when the, the people that work mm -hmm. here are great. And they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love that it's the community. Mm -hmm. So we feel like you're dealing with the community. Hearing the chef's story is amazing. The food, you get 10 bonus points. You already at a, at a 9, 10, you know? You know? Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I would definitely say, come here. Come here, try it out. Honestly, if there's like, in Brownsville, there's so much to do, there's so much to see. You can go to museums, you can go look at art, you can walk to the parks, you can, so this is like a perfect place to come have an, a, you know, if you wanna have brunch, if you wanna have an early breakfast. So um, mm -hmm. definitely come check it out, check out the neighborhood, there's so much to see. Go visit the uh, the hall library. See what that's about. Literally, it's a really cool building. Three minutes away. Three minutes away. You can away. probably walk there. Yeah. Um, there's the Harold Washington Cultural Center right, right across there. the street. Right so there. it's a, it's in a really cool area. Um, and yeah, I think we're gonna go eat. Dario is smacking the catfish, so Look, I gotta hang up so I'm, I can go get I'm me sorry. some. I can't even pay attention what what's going on here. Well, we'll see y'all next time.